Sergeant Major Adams, Will Marshall. What's going on, man? Oh, uh, the bear. The bear. Oh, my gosh. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you, too, Jump Master. What's happening? Oh, I'm doing so good. I'm doing so good. Hey, I'm recording you, if you don't mind. I, I, I'm, don't mind at all. I, uh, <clears throat> I have begun... Uh, Sar Major recently to get very nostalgic and and really introspective and looking around me and realizing that there's some things that I have not been saying and talking people I have not been talking to that that maybe I need to be talking to more you know and you're one of them and um, you know we spent some time together you know went through some through a night or two of of interesting times and even more though uh, you really guided me um, in a lot of things in my life and I'm not sure I ever adequately told you thank you and so thank you very much for for what you've done I really appreciate it well I, 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 I will tell you this um, I enjoy every moment that we spent together as, 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 as soldiers and leaders of soldiers and anything that I was able to do to provide uh, any form of comfort or guidance you know, not only was it my job, it was my pleasure. You, you were definitely uh, one of the guys that made life better for me without question. And I, I ended up um, where I ended up because soldiers, NCOs like you didn't just give, you know, 70, 80 percent. I mean, when you came to work, man, you gave it all you had every day. And a lot of us benefited from that, and I'm thanking you. You don't need to thank me. I I need to be thanking you. Oh my gosh! So, so, so it's interesting, Sir Major. I, I appreciate the thanks right back. I really do. I talked to. Let me tell you who I had a chance to talk to the other day. Do you remember Friend, Sergeant Friend? Yeah. Heck yeah. He and I, he early in my career, I was like specialist or a young sergeant, and he was a PFC or a specialist. We got entangled together. We were a high altitude entanglement out of a out of a C-141 one day, and um, wow. So so not long ago we had a chance to talk. I recorded our conversation. I'm going to share that conversation before long on. I've got his permission to do so. It's a really interesting story to hear. You know, I'd love to hear and record the stories that you and I are co would have out of out of our um, uh, operation just about, I think we called it, when we went to Haiti. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, man, wasn't that something, man? Dude, it's that all the was absolutely something. I mean, for something to not happen... I mean, the intrigue and all that we gathered from that was absolutely amazing. I mean, a lot of times when when you go through the 96-hour sequence and it doesn't happen, uh, you know, a lot of it is, okay, well, we'll pack it up until we do it again. But there was a lot of interesting things that uh, went on uh, during that time. And... and Believe it or not, I was um, I was working up at Aberdeen Proving Ground up in in, in Maryland uh, with my company doing some tests, and I was in the PX, and I was standing behind a two-star general, and he was talking to the the cashier. And he turned around and he looked at me. And he says, I know you from somewhere. And and, and I'm talking about we went, I mean, that, that. What happened?
happened? What happened? At that moment, oh. it went, we went back. Oh, wow. I thought that was me for a while. I was confused. I don't use this Yahoo Messenger very often, but I saw that <laughs> it was just, we might be able to just absolutely link up right away, and I was like, let's do it. While the iron's hot, absolutely. Sometimes, if you if you miss it, you miss it, you know. Right, and um, he turned around. and He said, "I know you from somewhere," and I'm looking at this guy. And last time I saw him, he was a major, and he was on our aircraft, and he was from 82nd Signal Battalion. And, and I said, sir, you and I were on the same aircraft going in Haiti. Wow. Hey. And he said, how can you remember that? I said, sir, you just wouldn't believe. I said, NCO, we don't forget nothing. Oh, wow. I said, uh, me, I said, me, I said, me and Marshall remember that doggone grenade coming oh. loose and, and, and rolling down the ramp. Okay. I said, we remember all of that stuff. Okay, Sergeant Major, you got to tell, so, okay, so I'm recording a conversation with Command Sergeant Major Wilbur V. Adams. He's known as the Bear. All right, he shaped more people in my sphere of world. Okay, if you're listening to this, you're listening to me because you know me for some reason. I bet you you know or have heard stories about the guy that's telling this story, okay? He and I were on an airplane together going to Haiti that got turned around before the jump happened. We were loaded like sons of bitches from top to bottom. You couldn't be no heavier. You couldn't be no bigger. You couldn't stuff no more on there. And we were going to go there, and we were going to kick some ass. So, so Star Major, sure. Major, tell me the story, what you remember, of because I've told this story for years, and I just wonder, I wonder if, do you want me to tell it first and you fill it in, or do you want to tell it and... and, and yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I'll be vulnerable here. Yeah. So, what I remember is we, we had been to war and back without ever leaving the airplane, all right? So... If I'm right. telling this story, we had we had prepared for war, prepared prep like you have no idea, twice, and then the second time we get up on the airplane and we fly away. I mean, our buttholes were puckered so tight. We had a brief in Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major, remember the briefing where they they made us like sign something saying we wouldn't jump out of the airplane? Remember that? Yeah, the, yeah, the um, Colonel Abazay. Yes, yes, yes. During yes, yes. that step briefing, this guy went on to be a four star with sitcom. Yes. He told us, he says, he says, don't let me find any of you safeties on the ground. That's exactly what he said. Okay, so to explain to people that might not get what we're talking about, there was a culture among us leaders at the level that Sir Major and I were that having a combat jump was so important to our career oh and our, our right. self-worth that we, that people were really worried. And I'll tell you, that other people had talked about it. I wasn't jumping for shit with a BA-18 for no reason. I didn't want to be on the ground anyway, you know? Oh, God. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, okay, so so we had we had flown out, um, all packed for bear. Sergeant Major and I were on the third C-130 of like 20 or That's something. Right. We were on number three. And right. we were flying... Uh -oh. At one point, we had to fly straight through a thunderstorm. We were like hanging up in the Ooh. air and bouncing all over the place. Hey. Lightning was striking everywhere. Hey. Hey. It, it, it wasn't just a thunderstorm. We were flying through the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> That's what made it yeah, so yeah, damn just, scary. <laughs> you're right. 
You are absolutely right. So he went for it. He went for it through the Bermuda Triangle. And I said, why in the hell is this going so crazy out here? And the pilot said, you know, over the intercom, said, man, we're flying through the Bermuda Triangle, so no telling what might happen. <laughs> and so I said, oh, my God. Oh. I said, to, 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 to add fear to entry, I tell you, I said, who else but the 82nd could do something like that? Oh, my gosh. Hey, do you remember the Air Force photographer that we had on board? Do you remember that guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, Absolutely. my gosh. He, like, he had, like, the cleanest uniform you've ever seen in the world. He was, like, <laughs> strapped into, he had his little camera and his little tape recorder kind of thing, and all the rest of us were, like, looking like we ain't slept in three days. We didn't know what's going on. Absolutely. Absolutely. We were trying to remember the challenge and password, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, so, so, to continue kind of telling the story, um, one of the things that I always remember was, was, um, at one point there was somebody that like raised their hand and said, I've got to pee. And, right. and, um, um, you know, it was just like, kind of like, um, and, um, okay, you got to pee. What, we can't do it. They gave us these little tubes. You remember the little tubes? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And. Yeah, they gave us the little, little pee tubes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so the guy was like, how do I use it? And I'm like, dude, you take your shit off. You're on your own, man. There, I can't get to you. And I, 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 he like, <laughs> in the middle of the thing, he was like, halfway up and he was on the he was on the, the, the port side and I climbed up there halfway and he said like I gotta pee and I'm like well we well. and and you know what and, and and I I remember that so well. I mean we were so packed in there, it was so much gear you literally had to climb over the top of folks to get to this guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think I came back and I told you. I'm like, well, what was I supposed to do? And you're like, hey, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't I, know. And I said, I said, man, I said, man, I'm glad that was you and not me. <laughs> oh gosh, oh gosh. All right. So I said, there's no way. I said, there's no way my big ass was gonna climb up over the top. And they wasn't gonna let me climb up over the top of them like they, like like you did. Oh my gosh. Well, I, I said, still, Look, I still like weigh. I still weigh like 160, 570 pounds back then. Oh, oh. So tell me, so tell me what you remember on that. You know, we we'll get to the great grenade story. So let's let's go back if you don't mind about the um about that airplane. Tell me about that grenade. Tell me about that grenade. Remember when um, when they lowered the tailgate and uh, we were getting the soldiers ready to disembark. And all of a sudden, that dog on hand grenade hit the tailgate and start rolling <laughs> yep. off of the tail tailgate onto the tarmac. And you and I looked at each other <laughs> <laughs> and said, "Is this really happening? That somebody just, you know, is this?" And, and we looked to make sure the pin was still in. And, and 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 all of that. I mean, that was just something that was completely uh, unexpected. And then, you know, I thought about that years later, and I'm saying, what if in today's time, with all of the stuff that's going on with, um, uh, you know, with guys, you know, wanting to end it all, but they're not going out by themselves, I mean, today, what we saw would take on a, a whole different look, I mean, what we saw then would take on a whole different look 
uh, than it did at, at that time. We looked at it as, you know, somebody lost control of, of an explosive. Today, somebody might assume that somebody's trying to kill us from within. Uh, you, yeah, well, absolutely. Oh, so I remember this much the same thing. Uh, so what had happened was, um, to finish the story about the pee, about halfway up, a guy raised his hand and said, I got a pee. I crawled up there to him. Right. I said, I, right. said um, I can't help you. There's not much I can do. Uh, here's a tube. He kind of laughed. Uh, I came back, and not maybe, I don't know, five minutes later, that whole bench seat is going, oh, man, you did, you did. Oh, it's running down. It's getting me wet. I, they were all mad at him. <laughs> It's dripping on the floor, um, and it wasn't probably about 10 to 15 minutes after that we got the word that we were turning around. Right. You remember that? Remember that word? Remember getting oh, yeah. turned around? Absolutely. Absolutely. Tell me about that. Tell me your thoughts uh, on that. Uh, one of the um, reporters from... I can't remember if it was ABC News or NBC News, but she was up on the tailgate and she was doing an interview. And we're talking about, uh, you know, what we could talk about as far as the mission was concerned and, you know, what, you know, this meant to uh, the people of Haiti, what it meant to our country, what it meant to you know, the 82nd to be embarking on the largest uh, combat jump in history, uh, you know, of, 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 of our army. And as soon as the word came that we were turning around, how her emotion changed so quickly to being so interested in something, now all of a sudden it doesn't matter anymore. I mean, her emotions, it was just like turning the light switch on and off. And I said, man, how can she do that? I mean, I'm still, you know, revving up inside and, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, the sequence of events going forward, going back, and then how she just thought, well, it's done. My job is over. I don't, you know, all this other stuff doesn't matter anymore. And and I saw the difference right then uh, from a soldier doing their, get, you know, preparing to do a job and um, somebody from the media. Very, very you know, it was it, with her. It was only about uh, you know the carnage that was getting ready to happen on the ground. All the other stuff didn't matter, and 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 that was kind of disappointing. One of the things I remember, Sergeant Major, was very, very telling, interesting to me, was I saw the soldiers individually have two reactions. And it was very polarized which reaction it was. You had one group of soldiers that was so relieved that they weren't jumping out of that airplane and going to get shot at. And then you had a group of soldiers that were very, very upset that they weren't going to get a, uh, a they combat were, They jump. were dejected. They were dejected. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was wild, right? It, it wasn't. I didn't know how to think. I didn't know how to think about it because I had already realized that I, I mean I wasn't going to get some badge out of it. I wasn't. Uh, right. but, but there right. were a group of people. I mean, but at that time in our culture, to get a jump was a big thing. To have a combat jump was a big. Th that's how right. you. Oh, that's how goodness. you rule rule a group of people with ribbons and awards and things. It is amazing. Right. How, Absolutely. Amazing how influential that is. But but here 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 is the thing. Here is the thing. 
when when you when you peel back the onion and you and 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 everybody being honest with each other uh it was no more uh of a combat jump than jumping on Sicily because there you know it wasn't like it was the Germans at Normandy waiting for you to hit the ground or anything like that I mean it was basically uh, you know you jumping in unopposed uh, you know wasn't going to be anybody that brave to be be on the ground aiming uh, weapons at 30,000 paratroopers, I mean 15,000 paratroopers, that just wasn't going to happen. And so when you when you look at it realistically, when you look at it honestly, uh, it was about the, 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 the folklore, um, the, the idea that uh, you are now, uh, you know, point one zero 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 percent of uh, of any, you know, all soldiers that ever jumped out of an airplane uh, to to have that star, you know, in the middle of your uh, your airborne wings. And uh, but the 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 fact that. It, the fact that we called it a combat jump was just, you know, we, we, they determined that that, because you had the potential of being shot at, then you were um, going to get that credit. That's I right. mean, we jumped, we jumped. In, in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait where there was more stuff aimed at us than ever could have been aimed at us in Haiti and I don't know nobody talked about you know putting a star you know on your on your uh, on your wings there right and then right. I don't know it's funny it's funny and I, I, I and, and and that's just my that's just my uh, my approach, uh, you know, to it. And and you'll have other guys, uh, you know, saying something, com you know, 180 degrees different. But uh, the fact that we're in position to have the discussion, you know, I'm going to respect uh, your point of view and and in kind. Um, for us to even be having this conversation, you obviously respect mine. Oh, heck yeah, heck yeah. I, you're one of my heroes. You're, you've always been. I'll never forget the first time I ever saw you. I'll never forget that. You were a master sergeant. You were a master sergeant. You were working in a three shop at 3rd of the 4th. I walked in there, and and uh, and somebody's, you know, I was like, who's the, who's the new guy? And he, they're like, he's mm -hmm. new sergeant major. And uh, he's going to be the new sergeant major. And I'm like, Oh, okay, all right, well, cool. And uh, I went by, and I, I, I think I, I think I introduced myself to you, and you did. You probably would never remember, but I, you know, I was like, "Hi, welcome, glad you're here," kind of thing. I'm in Bravo Battery or something like that. Uh, yeah. And uh, and that was great. It, it was. We had still. We were still in the old battalion before we had even moved. Right. Right. Yeah. Way back when. Way back when. I remember. Uh, Gosh, what was it? When who was the sergeant major when you came? Who'd you replace? Was it was it Kendrick? Uh, no, it was uh, uh, Miranda Steve. Oh my gosh, I used to love sergeant major Miranda. <laughs> oh my gosh. So so I feel like I'm monopolizing the hell out of your time, um, but I'm enjoying the hell out of talking to you. Tell you the truth. Oh man, this is great, man. I I, I, I can't uh, I can't remember the last time I had this much fun talking with one of you guys. Uh, I think <laughs> uh, talking with old um, crazy maggot a couple weeks ago at the hospital, he had me rolling. Oh my gosh, maggot is you know he's getting through. He's doing all right. I haven't talked to him in a couple weeks myself. Um, you know, I guess 
You know, I, I, I sure hope he pulls through and they get it figured out. I don't, I don't even, I can't yeah, even imagine it. You know, I would hope, if you don't mind, I would like to edit some of this stuff, but I would, if you don't mind, have permission maybe to, to, to post some of this up on Facebook as we tell stories. Absolutely. Um, but, Absolutely. Uh, um, there's some of those stories, if we don't start capturing them and, and putting them mm -hmm. out there, and, and I'm going to make sure this gets in the recording, if anybody has a story, an Army story that they want to tell, um, call me. Mm -hmm. I want to hear it. I want to hear the story. I want to record it. And let's put it in social media so we can record some of these things and understand that uh, we I, just I, told I, the story tonight about the grenade coming off the tailgate of the, of the, of the aircraft. That was awesome. Man, I, 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 I will tell you, uh, Will, in, in, in with that little battalion, if you just had the time uh, from private to colonel, just listen to some of the things that these soldiers saw, you know, what they did. Oh, my goodness. That is just, you know, the funniest stuff, uh, you know, the most interesting stuff you ever, uh, you know, uh, you know, want to hear, want to talk talk about. I remember um, <laughs> talking with um, with Delton Lockley. Um, he was, oh my I God. think he was Charlie Daddy first. Uh, yes, love. He was my first son. He was the one that told me I had to go compete to be the NCO of the year. He was the one that, yeah. that made me do it. I didn't volunteer to do anything like that. And I think, was, was Chapa the... the the battery commander. I believe he was. I believe he was. And Lockler tells the story about, I think, something what happened to Chapel on a battalion run, and he, and he fell ill. And so he stopped, and he laid down on the side of the road, uh, and somebody was calling, you know, for a medic. Locklear runs up to him, and he looks down, you know, all these units running <laughs> by, and he says, sir, sir, get up. you embarrassing me. <laughs> I said, this man is about to die. Locklear talking about <laughs> the man is ready to go. The man is embarrassing him. That's the culture. I that was it. Man, I said, exactly. Oh my gosh. Hey, how many? Remember when? Uh, so, so flag and several others like flag used to like to run down the center line of that road. Center yep. line. Of, you remember? You oh, know what I'm talking goodness. about, right? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Oh. Just begging for. Do you remember the story of when Delta Battery's dog, the bulldog mascot, went and bit somebody, and then there was a fight? Is that true? Oh, yeah. Is that's that true, true, or is that, that was a, true? It's that was true. true. Mm -hmm. That was true. That's true. That's true. That was true. Oh my gosh! I know one that's true. Uh, Cuddy, Sergeant Major Kendrick. Were you around when Kendrick was around? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Cuddy. So I'll never forget the day that we're. Standing on the uh, out in the field, we're all out doing battalion PT, and they had just come out with the kindler, gentler cadence. We couldn't sing certain yeah, things right. anymore, okay? And uh, and Kendrick calls everybody in really close, you know, and how he talks, right? And he says, "Ah, oh, yeah. ah, listen up, all you motherfuckers, <laughs> listen up." They say we can't, we can't talk about no motherfucking females. We can't talk about no motherfucking communists. And we can't be talking about no motherfucking legs. So just so you know, don't be talking um, about no motherfucking communists and legs and females. Now get back in fucking formation. Fall in. That was him. That was him. Oh, that my gosh. Him. And the commander, so I don't remember who the commander was that day. I would love to, to oh, it might have been Hampsey. Captain Hampsey. I don't know, but but I think I was in Charlie Battery and an NCO at the time because I always worried about calling cadence. 
I was good at it enough that I could like sing a little bit, but please don't make me like carry on for like an hour, as I don't know too many. But I'll it, get out there and sing, you know. It, it was, it was, it was, it was the guy before him. Was it? And uh, so what anyway, was that? what was his name? So whoever the commander was, for whatever reason, he says I'm calling Cadence first today. And and. All the NCOs were like, oh, what? The commander did the best thing I've ever heard a commander do before. He made such a farce of cadence for the first mile that we sounded off like you have no idea. He, we made cadence about the stop sign, about the oak tree, about the building, about the stupidest shit he made cadence about. And we sounded off, and we laughed, and we found a way as a unit to get through that and realize that we could find ways to be motivated together without singing bad cadence. And that that was really right, cool exactly. what he did. It was really cool what he did. Mm -hmm. And I, I've always wanted, I've always, as I remember, look, think back on that time and tell that story, I, I wish I could go back to that guy and, and hear what he had to say and why he did what he did. Lots of good Americans That's during awesome. those times. Lots of different, lot of, lot of great Americans we know, right? Absolutely. All right, Absolutely. Sergeant Major. Thanks for thanks for the advice, and and, and I appreciate you listening uh, and. Um, and you know your guidance, and and I really do appreciate you you just taking a taking a moment to reminisce with you, uh, reminisce with me. And I've got this on tape, and I'm going to look at it and edit it a little bit, and uh, throw it out there on on YouTube or Facebook. And and I, there are guys that would love, mm -hmm. absolutely love to have the conversation with you that I have had with you tonight. Hundreds of guys, hundreds of guys. Uh, you are revered. Well, I don't know about that, but you, you are revered like would. you don't even know. You're revered like you have no idea. You shaped men's lives um, in ways and women's wi uh, lives in ways um, that is not soon forgot by an entire generation of air defenders and you know other soldiers. You know all kinds of soldiers. So well, I appreciate. That. Thanks for what I you've really done. Do. You've you've had an um, an amazing impact in my life. And um, and thanks again. I've, I've been talking with with Command Sergeant Major Will Wilbur V. Adams at the Bear. Um, it, uh, it did everything that that you could possibly do as a leader in the air defense branch of the Army, and has and has has at every level uh, been the epitome of what an American looks like. In, in today's times. So thanks for talking with me, Sergeant Major. I sure do appreciate it. All right, my friend. You take care. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye.